Hello and welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charmney and this is another video in the series on Derbyshire churches. It's another, another week, you can probably tell from the lighting that this isn't the same week I've filmed last week. It's a lot gloomier out there. But this is the little church of St. Michael and All Angels, Sutton on the Hill. And when we go outside you'll see that this is very much Sutton on the Hill because we're right on top of the hill here. Now, there was a medieval church here. There are still bits of it left, but basically it was completely rebuilt by the Victorians, barring a bit of the chancel. So what we see here is a Victorian church. It's a very good example of a Victorian Gothic church that's imitating the 14th century. The Victorians, well, a lot of Victorian Gothic architects, had this idea that what you get is the Gothic style, so-called, develops, and you start off with the early English, the little pointy lance at windows, and you can't have these really big windows just because they didn't have glass, really. So you had to have little windows. And then you have uh, the 14th century, the so-called decorated style. And this is noted because they like to put twiddly bits on things. That's why it's called the decorated style. And then you have the, the so-called perpendicular, which is fewer twiddly bits, and it's much more about form rather than decoration. And the Victorians had this false organic idea about architecture that you have a sort of youth, you have a, a vigorous maturity, and then you have a, a kind of decay into old age. And they said, well, the early English is youth, of course. The decorated is that vigorous middle life, and the perpendicular is this kind of decay. Well, it's not. It's just a continuing development of the technology. But nevertheless, they became quite interested, quite obsessed, really, with the 14th century. And so what we have here is a, an imitation of 14th century building. You can see you've got the text over the chancel arch. This building is, barring one or two things like that screen over there, it's much as it would have been when the Victorians finished it. And as we go around, we'll see some of these interesting features. So let's do that. Let's have a look around this building. So as usual, we start at the back. We're here right at the west end, the tower screen behind me, and the font in front. And you can see here you've got this big chancel arch. There's no screen. This wasn't a particularly high church parish, so no chancel screen. There's some memorials around. Of course, we've got an organ. There is a little north aisle. And some of that north aisle arcade may be medieval, but it basically looks Victorian. You've got various improving texts painted on the walls. So it very much it is this Victorian imitation of the 14th century. But it's, a, it's not a very high church example. Now we're in alabaster country, so there are local alabaster quarries, which means that alabaster gets perhaps overused in this building. What we'll do is we'll start off going round the aisle. Well, first of all, look at the font. The font is, like the rest, like most of the rest of the building, the font is Victorian. It imitates the, again, the form of the 14th century. We've got this uh, actually quite decent step because, of course, the minister has to stand at the back there when doing the actual baptism, and a decent amount of room to stand on. You'll notice we've got the tiles there, probably Minton from Stoke-on-Trent. There's the font. The carpet, of course, is modern. The Victorians wouldn't have had a carpet there. There's a shelf there, which I expect would have been for hymn books. There's now a rather a splendid setup on the back back pew there, the hymn books, little pointy window, lots of stained glass here, so it's on a gloomy day like this, it's even gloomier than it would have be otherwise. We've got here this uh, All Things Bright and Beautiful, this uh, sentimental picture, you'll find it in, in a lot of, uh, lot of churches. Uh, here we have, and see this is the crucifixion, again this sort of uh, rather sentimental Victorian print that you've got at the back that smaller versions 
and bigger versions would be done and it just depended on how much room you had. Normally these things would be hung in people's houses rather than in churches, but obviously get in churches as well. Nice window here. Some wall hangings, village hall for example, and you can see not real organ pipes there, but dummy pipes showing the organ is here. There is, well, there, there may have been a little chapel, and there doesn't look like there was ever a little chapel here, which again indicates more of a, a sort of low church setup. And there we have the alabaster pulpit and alabaster reading desk and the brass lectern in the middle. Pews, and you'll notice they have heaters in them. That's very, very important. It's a cold morning up here, Jan late January morning, and yes, yeah, so I can quite see that in a service you'd want to have heating. That's a very good idea in these old churches. Now this, is, of course, is the Church of St. Michael, and so we have here a, a sculpture of St. Michael, the Archangel, slaying the dragon. Of course, the dragon is, uh, is the devil. We have here the church chess. Now, I've mentioned parish chess before in these videos. Oh. Parish chests were used for keeping particularly records and valuables. And you can see here how, you've, again, you've got your three locks, two for the church wardens and one for the minister. And that means that the three must be present to open it, and so nobody can get in there and steal stuff or alter the records which could be done in and one of the reasons people might want to alter the records would be baptisms or marriages to attempt to demonstrate that somebody's marriage is somebody's married and so or that somebody is was legitimately born when they weren't and these things were quite important back in the day we have here a little window of Christ the Good Shepherd and the Virgin Mary. And this is a memorial to Sarah Ford, uh, no, Sarah Ford White, rather, who died October the 29th, 1870. So there we have St. Michael. You can see he's treading this dragon under his feet. He's got his spear. The furnishings here in the chancel are, well, at, rather at the break of chancel, are quite interesting, very impressive. But as I say, this is alabaster country, so getting alabaster is relatively easy here. It's not like if you're way down south somewhere and there aren't any quarries and you've got to send all the way up to Derbyshire. Here, you've just got to really to go down the road and you probably have locals here who owned alabaster quarries so somebody who'd be able to supply it cheap but you've got here the reading desk now of course that is where the minister reads the service and that's the the desk closest to us in the middle there's the eagle lectern the brass lectern the eagle is of course a symbol of the apostle john it's also a symbol or it's also the the eagle mentioned in revelation and you have beyond the pulpit where the sermon is given. So the, the lectern is where the readings will be you know, you know, read from, so the Bible readings. The prayer book service will be led by the minister from the reading desk. And then when the sermon comes, the minister crosses the chancel arch, goes up that alabaster pulpit, and delivers the sermon, then comes back down to the reading desk. So that's how that works. There's this eagle lector. There are a variety of forms of them. Sometimes they imitate medieval. In this case, it's uh, trying to be a bit more naturalistic as an eagle. Now, see here, we, we come into the chancel. And in the chancel, we have the organ. So, first of all, the organ. Now, that, now this organ tells us it is by Harston and Son of Newark-on-Trent. Two manual with a pedal board. And you can just see behind the dummy pipes there some of the real pipes. And then this door here goes into the vestry. The alabaster continues in the chancel. We have this alabaster reredos in 14th century forms. 
the east window is imitating even the style of the 14th century. You can see how that Roman soldier, that soldier leading Christ to crucifixion there, is actually dressed in 14th century armour. And the clothes of 14th century, or imitation thereof, of course. But of course, this is a Victorian window. There is here this great tomb, and this is to Samuel Slay of Ash and Etwall. Um, born Hartington, and he died in 1679 at the age of 76. There's no effigy, rather there is a coffin. Now we have, there is very usefully, a little guide here, the slave family and their memorials. You see there he is, and there's Judith Boys, his wife, and it tells us he was the eldest son of Gervais Slay, who spelt his name the same way I do, I spell mine, who purchased the manor of Ash in Sutton Parish, together with the Ad of and the vicarage, that's the right to anoint the vicar, in 1603. Gervais died in 1626 and was buried at St. Werburgh's Derby, that's what eventually became the cathedral, I believe. Samuel himself is buried in front of the altar. The memorial actually is for his wife, um, Judith Boys, who came from Kent and died in 1634, and then of course his memorial is added to it. So it's the upper material here is to do with his wife. He married twice more. His uh, third wife, Elizabeth, died at the age of 82 in 1738, over 103 years after the death of his first. Well, that's what happens, of course, if you marry, if an, an elderly man marries a young woman. So this is the most impressive memorial in the entire church. It's quite typical of the period with this big arch here, with, of course, the, the arms, his arms and wife's arms at the top and more arms at the bottom. The table here is altar-wise. There is no piscina because of the Victorian rebuilding. There is a little shelf up there. And... Memorial over there, talking about the vault, the vault. Can't read it though. <laughs> but again, it's just, it's just over the say vault it's down there. So there we are. Um, on the lectern, we have the revised English Bible, but never mind. Um, could be worse, could be good news. The charts were restored in the year 1948 in memory of Captain G. M. Buxton. Here we have the windows. We have here St. Michael as the one who weighs the souls of the dead. So that's to do with, of course, the dedication of St. Michael. And we have here Christ in the centre, and on the one side the Good Samaritan, and on the other Tabitha caring for the poor. There's a, a memorial here, which date, which is of William Eaton of Etwall, formerly of Sutton on the Hill, who died July the 15th, 1858. So, and at the bottom, the text, by grace are ye saved, and quite right too. So, it's an impressive building, it's a very much a Victorian rebuild. When we go outside, we'll see what little remains of the medieval building. So. We'll do that now. Also, here we are outdoors at Sutton on the Hill. I here at the east end or at the what, southeast corner, so you can get a good good idea of this building. You can see you've got your spire, which, if you're a Victorian church builder and you're trying to imitate the 14th century, you need a spire as well as a tower. You've got your typical nave, chancel, crosses on the ends, and it's in the chancel that there is some little bit of medieval work surviving. So we'll have a look around the outside and uh, see also what we can of the view from up here, because it's quite spectacular up here on the hill. 
one of the more obvious things about the location of the church is that there's only one house near it, and that is the old rectory. Everything else is just not on the hill anymore. Now, given the name of the village, it must have originally had a village up here, but the village has just kind of slipped down into the valley, leaving the church in splendid isolation up here. So as we approach the east end, you can see here, and we'll just have a look at the, the few remaining bits of medieval masonry. It really is a little bit sad. But here is uh, the chancel. And you can see that more irregular masonry in the chancel. And that is medieval work. Compare and contrast the Victorian nave. We move around here. We'll just go out a bit. And we have these rather impressive slate memorials, quite common in this part of the world. You can see there we have an uh, open Bible on that one. The east window is aggressively Victorian. The Again, there are no houses, just the church and graveyard, and there is, of course, the old rectory. Vestry and North Isle. And because we're on the north side here, the, the graves are mostly more recent, because in former times the north side was not used for burials. It was regarded as being, a, well, it was a, the, the side where you buried those who were um, shall we say less favoured, just to try and be a little bit politically correct, or rather not so much politically correct, it's just sensitive. And you can see again, now obviously it's a bit of a misty morning here, but on a, a fine day you can see for miles, and where is the, the village? Well the village is down in the valley, it's left the church up on the hill. So Pretty much there we have it. There's the uh, tower, and yes, that is all pretty much all looks Victorian. A little chimney there for the heating. So that is St. Michael and All Angels Sutton on the Hill. A good example of Victorian imitating the 14th century. You can see there there's the Lich Gate, which again is uh, quite recent, because being made mostly of wood, Lich Gates very often needed to be replaced. Here we have uh, one of these memorials from 1850 for Thomas Pakeman. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Marvellous to read these things. So there we have it. Let's pan round again. Here we are at the on the south side with its porch. And just a bit of medieval work in the chancel. So there we have it, Sutton on the Hill, St Michael's. A strange location right here on top of the hill. You can see why the village moved. It's a bit draughty up here, but the church has stayed, rebuilt in the 19th century. Well, thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoy these videos. I enjoy making them, gives me something to do, keeps me out of mischief, you know, on my day off. So, again, thank you for watching, and may God bless you and keep you.